When you go deeper inside and you experience the, the limitlessness of love and the all-encompassing kind of experience of, of what li love is, you know, whatever will come through, you know, there's no hypothetical. So I often do gatherings and Chautauquas and, you know, I have a friend who has resistance to the masculine pronouns in the course, or I have a friend who suffered loss, or a friend who had a child who was killed, or something like this. Those are all hypothetical questions. Uh, and what I'm teaching, if you hang around me long enough and we go into it deep enough, you start to realize that, that those aren't even real questions. Those are hypothetical questions about the future uh, or possibilities, the coulda, woulda, shoulda things. Uh, for me, Every, my life is a, is a living experience and a living demonstration. And so people do ask, you know, the hypotheticals, what would you do if you were with somebody who was terminally ill? What would you say to them? Or what would you say to this friend and so forth? Uh, a lot of times when I'm in third world countries and so forth, where there seems to be in the world's perception a lot of poverty and sickness and and suffering and so on and so forth it's it's really fun when I go to visit those places to, to it's more of a striking contrast you know I mean here you see happy people uh, you see happy people on the island of Hawaii and you say well there's a, there's a lot of happy people you just one among a bunch of happy people people seem to be having a good time here enjoying the ocean and the blue sky and everything when you go to a third world country you know where there's starvation or those kind of things, it's more striking the love. Uh, that's why I think with Jesus in Galilee, it was quite striking. You know, it left a big impression because of what was going on in those days. They crucified people and, and the Roman Empire and so on and so forth. It was just, it stood out. It was very striking. And, and I go and I, I will be among all the people. I, you know, I, I will be among the children. I will be among in the cities. I go to the rural areas and so on and so forth. The presence of love is a state of mind, and it does offer a healing balm. Uh, it offers a soothing kind of experience to, to grief. You, you know that the people around Jesus were going through a lot of grief. Um, even the story of Mary and Martha, and when their brother, Lazarus, had died, they were stricken with grief, you know, and Jesus showed up and they were crying and they ran out to him, and Lord, Lord, if you'd if you'd only been here a little bit sooner, this could have been prevented. And, you know, and the whole story turned into a raising the dead experience in which everybody kind of gasped and looked up in the sky and everything because it was such an out of pattern experience. Nobody expected the, the brother to come out in his stinking grave clothes outside out the sepulcher like that. Nobody expected. And when I go to places, people, the unexpected seems to happen but the presence of love comes through. And like Jennifer was saying, oftentimes it's just, you know, holding someone. Or when somebody's in tremendous grief and loss, they just want permission to cry and, and have it be okay. So, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've just shown up and just held somebody while they were sobbing. And tears, tears down my shirt just because at that moment, that was the best thing that love could do, was embrace as a kind of a physical expression of you're held, you know, it's going to be okay, without the words. There wasn't much words to speak there. Um, I think at other times, it's just, it, it comes through in a way that, that always can be the most felt and the most experienced, the, the way that the love can radiate. And in many cases, it's not what you say <laughs> that, that counts, but it's just, it's just your attitude. It's almost like there's a spaciousness of non-judgment, which allows the hurt and the loss and everything to kind of come up, like and and to the surface even more, and and be released. Now, metaphysically, I can I can tell you that that the way this works is that the mind that believes it's separated from God, it it has this belief in separation, and this ego is a death wish. So. 
When that death wish is projected to time and space, we have dualistic concepts like birth and death. And it seems like in this world, the birth is a beginning and death is an end. Although spiritually, the deeper we go, we start to see that that doesn't seem very realistic. There's something that goes beyond birth and death. So, any time you are tempted to judge the world in any way, that is, looking through the lens of the death wish, including when the death wish gets projected out, including the death of a son, we'll say. Uh, and that's not really what death is. That's like the trick. People mourn the loss of a physical body, but there's something that's a mourning that's going on deeper in the mind, is the idea that the soul has, has bought into this ego belief system, and that's where the death is. So it did take me seemingly a number of years where I had to face this belief in death, where my, my grandfather, who I dearly love, went through a slow process of cancer and like a walking skeleton, and I had all my emotions come up when I would visit him in the hospital. I was facing my belief in death. Then my grandmother died, and it was a different experience. At that point, I was, I was very calm, and she never believed that that death was final. She didn't really believe in death. And we would have many conversations. And when she died, when she was 99, I was just there by her side. And I felt such peace and calmness, like we were the same one, the same presence. And I could look down at the body like a shell. And it was no different for me at that point from when she was alive. I didn't have any grief. I didn't have any sense of loss. She had asked me also to speak at her funeral. so. I just let her speak through me at her own funeral so she could address all the people. And they felt it, they were just, they all started crying uh, when she spoke through me to them at, at her funeral because they loved her so dearly and they felt her presence right there at the funeral. So, you know, those are things that I've learned, but we, we can't really get into the hypothetical except to say that, that love extends itself in the most helpful way in the moment. And uh, like Jennifer was saying, I don't know, I don't look ahead to that. I never look ahead for conditions because I don't, I don't, I really don't believe in hypotheticals anymore, the coulda, woulda, shoulda. It's, it's like my mind is unified now, so I'm not kind of looking at the what ifs. I, I'm into the I am and not into the what ifs anymore. But it would be very loving. Uh, that would be for sure. Very, very loving. Thank you.